What is all this crap? Well, we're doing the Zigbee. No, let's not and say we did. But what is all this crap? Well, we're doing the sewn off Zigbee bridge with just less pieces. Let's check it out. Now that we've separated most of this, this is going to be all of your sensors or your endpoints, basically what you're trying to read or control. So that's all going to be the same. So we won't be doing any of this. We did show this on the live stream. Node MCU with a Zigbee adapter and an antenna. This is the same little adapters, except it does have a stronger RF front end on them and you do get the antennas with them. And again, you would have to use like a Node MCU or a Wemos D1 Mini or something and make your own case, etc. type thing. Then there's this little guy, the little all-in-one USB chipset that you just plug in and use with ZHA, which is kind of like what this is, but the range sucks on this one. So didn't really like this one. And again, no case don't even have an antenna connector and it doesn't have a case. I don't really get this one, but whatever. Then this is one I've had for a while. This is Zigbee and Z-Wave Plus. I have gotten rid of Z-Wave Plus since I have had several issues with interference. And again, the range sucks on this one. Debugger that you use with these. And of course we won't be doing all of this. Yeah, I know this is the DIY channel, but sometimes easy is just the way to go. This comes in a case, ready to go, just with a simple USB power plug on it. And you can just toss it in the middle of your house. It is Wi-Fi. That was the big plus to me that I could place this anywhere in the house and start and create my Zigbee network instead of having to tie it to the home assistant server or whatever it might be and then having to pass USB ports and pass serial ports into VMs and Docker containers and yeah, your eyes just glaze over. This is all using TCP straight into home assistant and it's pretty simple to do. No, Sonoff didn't send me any sensors really to use with this, unfortunately, but it isn't locked to just Sonoff sensors. I've used it with the Aquaria or the Xiaomi little temperature and humidity and pressure sensor. This is some other little Tuya Zigbee sensor that I got that the Zigbee hub was junk. And this is another Tuya little door sensor. It works well with it. Again, it went with the hub that was junk that we got rid of. This is the Aquaria one. This is the Sonoff S31. This is going to be considered as a router, but we're going to go over that later. Don't let those terms confuse you like you do with some of the Home Assistant names, but we just won't go there. Or maybe we did. This is the Sonoff Basic Zigbee one. I guess this is the S31 again. So, and this is even a Singled LED Zigbee bulb, and we did forget one piece of the whole thing. RGB CCT, which is warm white and cool white LED controllers with 12 and 24 volt inputs for LED strips. Pretty cool that all this random stuff just works, and I didn't it didn't have to worry about making the network work correctly and keeping a proper mesh that plug A went to plug C and to feed sensor D. And I just plugged this in the middle of the house and it picked up everything. I didn't have to worry about any type of mesh stuff like I did with this junk. So enough of my rambling. We're going to put all this away and show you how easy it is to flash these sewn off Zigbee bridge with Tasmodo and bring it straight into Home Assistant and even with no MQTT. What? And we will not, and I will say it again, we will not be soldering to do the flash with this. So do not worry, you do not need a soldering gun. Once you got them out, just pull the bottom off. 
There's no wires, no nothing attached to it, simple enough. The only thing you will find, I would turn this around where the USB is facing you, and then you can take your screwdriver or a small spudger or something and just lift up the board because it's stuck into the USB connector. Just lift up the back and pull it straight out. There's no wires, it just pulls apart and that's it. There's nothing really to this thing. If you're familiar with this, you can probably skip past it, but for the new ones, it's real simple. There's 3.3 volts here. There's ground. We need GPIO zero, which is general purpose input output. Number zero, that allows us to put it into bootloader mode to flash the chip. Then the ETX and ERX, that's the ESPTX and ESPRX pin, and we'll use those two pins to flash the ESP chip. So for flashing this, you need a USB TTL adapter, and there are many different variations of this type of little adapter here. This is the CH340. G chipset, I believe. There's the FTDI. There's so many different ones, but basically you want to use the 3v3. So do make sure your model is set to 3v3 or 3.3, not on 5 volts. You don't want to use 5 volts. And the pins on them are just going to be simple little DuPont jumpers. Then you just slide them on. There's no having to solder anything or whatever. And to put them into the via holes, what I'd like to do is I'll take these breadboard jumpers. And of course, I will leave all the links down below of a bunch of different types you can get. So I'll use, the, say, the orange one. And I'll just take and shove the orange one into the female side of the DuPont jumper. And then now I have this one. So we're going to do ERX and just simply push that into the hole. It fits perfect. Orange will go to the TX here. And now you have that pin connected. And then basically repeat. You want to do TX to RX, 3V3 to 3V3, ground to ground. Now the GPIO zero up here. What I like to do in this case, if you don't have a little splitter, you could strip these back and tie them together, or you could, say for your ground, once you push your ground in here, basically what I do is you get this little door that you can pry up, or the little clip, whatever you want to call it, and I'll just stick the breadboard jumper in there, and it will stay put, and then I'll take my ground and put it in here as well and that way now you have a kind of split and whichever way you want to do this it's all up to you this only ha it's, I know it's not pretty but as long as it works and it has continuity you're only going to use it for about maybe a minute and then you're going to undo all this so once you got all your wires hooked up, do verify again that you are using 3.3 volts on your particular flasher. And remember RX goes to TX and then TX goes to RX. And we do have all the wires hooked up and everything as you can see here. And I don't have it plugged in yet because I like to do a little test just to make sure that I have the correct COM port. So, yep, you guessed it. We're going to open up Tasmatizer. Now, the little test I like to do, if you look at the COM ports it has without it plugged in, take note of which ones they are. This will help you, especially for the first timers that have not ever used a particular flasher on your computer. This will show you if those drivers are working or not. And I do get my little tones that I normally get when I plug in a USB device. Now I'll go ahead and hit the refresh button and you'll notice I get another COM port. And that's a really easy test to know if your drivers are working. If you don't get an extra COM port, you either got something shorted out or grounded out on your USB flasher, your USB cable is not good, or you don't have the drivers loaded correctly. So in here, we're going to load the latest release which is at the current time, 
and you do need to load the tasmodo-zbbridge.bin. And that's about it. Just hit the Tasmatize button. Now, if you do get a crash after, right after you press the button, you may want to try running it as administrator. So once you do see it saying writing and erasing, you do know you have all the wires connected. Don't bump anything. So just hang out, sit still. And once the flashing is done, we are going to follow along straight up with the guide that I wrote on my blog post because we have changed that blog post several times because things just kept getting easier. So always do reference that post because, well, we just can't change up the video very easily and it's just much easier to put it in the blog post and all the commands and everything as things evolve because something actually might get even easier. So at this point, it does say power cycle. We're not going to power cycle it because actually what we're going to do, we're going to pull the wires off of it. We're going to put it back in the case, plug up the USB cable, and then we're going to look for that access point. And at this point, you need to pull up your Wi-Fi either using your phone or this very computer and look for a Tasmodo dash such and such. It's going to be different letters and numbers for an access point. You go ahead and hit scan for networks. And then go ahead and pick your access point. Just pick one of the blue access points. And then you'll go ahead and type in your password. And do verify that you do have the correct password by clicking the checkbox and make sure that it is your password right there. And then once you're done, just hit the save button. Then the access point's gonna drop and you will need to look on your router for whatever IP address was given to this new device and just simply browse to it with your browser. So once we're in here, you Tasmodo veterans, you may want to start to jump to configuration and then go on and set it up MQTT. Well, you don't need MQTT if we're doing the ZHA integration. Now, if you do want to change the host name of what it appears on your router, you can go in and set that as the topic here. You may want to put it something like Tasmodo underscore ZB bridge or something. And that way it does show up on your network and you just don't see a Tasmodo device and get it confused during your next device. Now, once that's done, we will need an, one additional file. So if you look back in the beginning, which I did skip of the blog post, there is this NCP UART that you do need to download. And go ahead and click it. And don't just right click anything and save as. You do need to come over here and press the download button. It's very important. Otherwise, you'll end up with just an HTML page and everything's not gonna work and then you're gonna get mad at it. And then, well, just the domino effect continues. At this point, if you don't want to do it with Home Assistant, you can download the later version of this and do the Tasmodo Zigbee MQTT thing, which we may get into later or another video. So what you need to do is copy the text command out of the blog. We'll just simply come into the console. Now, don't worry about any of the errors that are on here where it's saying this isn't supported and it's stopping and that's perfectly fine right now. Just don't. Once you paste those in, hit enter, give it a second, and it's going to reboot. Now, what I do find easier when doing this OTA flash, because it's very important that you get this OTA flash, we're about to flash the chipset of the Zigbee radio in the bridge itself. And Tasmodo is going to take care of it all for us. We used to have to do it some old way. It was weird. And, well, it's much easier. And this definitely thanks Theo for that. So what I do is I open up another tab of the same device. And what I'm going to do is you'll see behind me, I'm going to go ahead and put console. Now, it is much easier when you have two screens or you're just going to put two side by side. But for the sake of the video, I just don't have a lot of space to put stuff, especially when people are watching things on phones. Go to firmware upgrade, and you're going to send a file. Now that, we're not gonna send any bin files. So you'll browse to that NCP UART file we just downloaded. And go ahead and you're gonna hit start upgrade. 
Now watch this window over here. This is very important. So we hit start upgrade and you'll notice it did successful. Now this bytes may be changed as versions go on, but it sent the number of bytes, upload done, init bootloader, init sync, init packet send. XMD is for X modem. And yeah, you older guys that have been around, you probably go, whoa, X modem. Yeah, it's X modem that sends that chipset. Now we're gonna be watching for X modem successful. Boom, you see the successful message? Then we're good. It's going to go back to the main menu and it's going to restart. If you don't get that successful message, do not continue because you did not flash the Zigbee chipset in the radio and it's not gonna work. So just back up, go back, make sure you download the correct file and try to send it again. You need that successful message. And if you really get stuck, there's always the Discord link down below. Maybe we can get you helped out and we can figure out how to get that Zigbee chipset flashed on your device. And we'll go back into the console. And again, don't worry if you have any errors or anything, this is gonna be normal because what's happening, it's trying to start the actual Zigbee Tasmodo integration, which we didn't flash to firmware that supports that. And in italics is gonna be a nice command for us. And we're almost done with Tasmodo. Paste it all in the console. We'll go ahead and press enter. It should set some modules and it's gonna restart. Just give it a second. And the very important message you're looking for is this right here that says TCP start data port 8888 because that's the port that's going to connect from your home assistant to this bridge and for the ones that do all the crazy firewalls and blocking stuff and everything on their open source devices which is sometimes weird to me but hey whatever it's your network make sure that your home assistant can connect to this device on port 8888. Gonna jump on into configuration, integrations. So we're gonna hit the plus. We're gonna type in Zig, and get Mr. Zigbee. And for the serial path, we are going to use manual and we'll hit submit. It's gonna ask us for our radio type. We have EZSP and we'll hit submit and the serial device path. If you wanna do like me and just copy and paste, I hate typing stuff because I end up screwing things up. Come here and copy the italics, paste it in, and do not hit enter just yet because you need to change your IP address. Change the IP address to your Zigbee bridge. And I know some of you may be thinking, well, whoa, wait, what if the IP address changes? That's gonna break my ZHA. Well, absolutely. So do go put a reserved IP or however you do it in your router, you wanna make sure this IP of this bridge never changes. Otherwise you have to come back in here and you'll have to repoint it every time your IP address changes for your Zigbee bridge. Port speed, gonna be 115K. Now, if you want to see the cool stuff, hit submit and you can jump over and you should start to see a bunch of to MCU, from MCU, all this communication back and forth. And you can see it pop back and there it is. Success. And I'm going to hit finish. And now you're pretty much done. If you know how to add different Zigbee devices, roll on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off. I did the Sonoff S31 Lite. It doesn't have power monitoring, but it's a little Zigbee plug. If you have a bunch of different devices that you've found that work great, or maybe ones that don't work, you sure and leave it down in the comments down below. And of course, we're all gonna leave our list of ones that we found that work great and it does help out things. So I do appreciate it. So in the actual configuration, we'll hit configure. And we'll go ahead and hit the plus. And that's gonna allow us to add your Zigbee devices. And I did hold the button down for the S31. And we can go ahead and change the name to S31. There's no okay button or anything. I just click off of it and you're done. You can continue to add devices. 
say such as this little two-year one and this is that Aquarius sensor one we'll go ahead and hold the button down and if you get a timeout or anything just go ahead and start this little search thing over again and then put your device back in parry mode it's not rocket science to get any of these in parry mode usually all right this is the Aquaria one and of course to add them to your Lovelace we have a little card with a special name. We'll go ahead and add just a straight up entities card. And we've got Mr. Zigbee in here, Sonoff. Got the Aquaria. And we do get the relay for the Sonoff S31. And there we are, five devices. And you can see, this is some of the terms they talk about, the coordinator. And then you have Zigbee routers that aren't coordinators and the thing's confusing. So Zigbee coordinator, think of it more like your router, like your Wi-Fi. And then if you look at the Sonoff S31, you'll notice its device type is a router. Well, think of the router as more of a repeater. It's going to help uh, different devices that are past it from the coordinator and be kind of a stepping stone to create that mesh network. And it's typically only gonna be your devices that are on mains power. Because of course you want a battery device to sleep all the time. You don't want it to stay up and keep relaying messages back and forth. So you'll see this is an end device. It's not gonna be a type of router. Now that does lead to some of the issues that having this bridge in the middle of the house solves is because if you had to have a plug that bounces to another plug, to another plug to build this mesh, well, what if someone unplugs that plug to, I don't know, plug in their phone or guest or whatever, and then now they just took down all your Zigbee network somehow. So I prefer the method of this where the Zigbee coordinator has all of the ability to touch all the different sensors because I just don't have, and I probably will not have, a lot of mains powered Zigbee devices because I do prefer the ESP Wi-Fi types. But for the battery, hey, the Zigbee stuff's great. You just can't get that with the Wi-Fi devices. And that's about it. Pretty much covered the last little piece of my rant on why I do like this particular Zigbee bridge of being able to put it in the middle of the house. Don't forget, share some sensors down below. I like to check out all the different little Zigbee sensors and what the people are doing with Zigbee. If you have any issues, don't forget we're on Discord and help you walk you through some of this stuff if you get stuck. And don't close the window just yet. Make sure you give us a like, dislike, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon, do what you got to do. And I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It definitely helps bring new products and projects and different all the madness that we do on this channel all the time. I definitely appreciate it. And that's it. And y'all take care.